Hello, I'm Jay, and this is BERT. BERT is a system, it's a tool that understands language more than any other tool we've had in human history. Now, not as good as humans do, but it's able to do some impressive things. It's freely available for download, so anybody can download it and experiment with it and use it to build systems. It's incredibly versatile in that it can solve a lot of problems uh, around language. You have used BERT, even without knowing it. So if you've used Google search, you have used BERT. So let's say you go to Google search, you want to search for something. So you type, let's say, Siri technology, um, and then you get the results. Sometimes you see this description here at the top, but then you also have the uh, results uh, listed on, on the right here. Uh, sometimes when you click, you see these highlighted sections that are very relevant to your search query. I asked people which one of these used something like BERT, which one of these steps. And in fact, uh, all of them have used BERT. BERT is now powering almost every query in the English language and a lot of other languages as well. So let's look at some of the tasks that BERT helped with here. So here it did text encoding and it was used for to retrieve documents based on similarity to the query that you inserted. It did that. It did other things. So this summarization, Bird does really well at this summarization. So potentially it is what Google uses for summarization. That turns, let's say, a Wikipedia page into like a short uh, paragraph that summarizes it. This is also can be the highlighting the relevant parts in a text uh, that are relevant to, like, let's say, a query. Uh, it's something called question answer as well. And Bert does really well at this. One example of how Google uses BERT in search is to say before they rolled out BERT, when somebody searched for Brazil traveler to USA, uh, the results would give you some pages about USA to Brazil travel. So the, it didn't really, uh, wasn't able to capture the order of the words in a, in a meaningful way. But BERT enables a search engine to uh, understand that context and how words are related to each other, which are very meaningful and important for a search engine. Another example that you may have come across if you use like Gmail or, or other email clients that give you these suggested uh, responses. Uh, so this is a task called response selection and BERT does really well at that as well. So this is BERT um, and these are some, only some of the language tasks that it's able to do. This has been your very brief introduction to BERT. If you're still interested in how it works, I can tell you, stick around, just a couple more minutes. BERT takes in language, so we can throw words at it or a sentence. Uh, so let's say we want to process the sentence, everybody dance now. We just put this CLS token and these two words, let's say one before it and one after it. And BERT outputs something that looks like this. It's a table, every column of which corresponds to one of the words. So our three word uh, sentence here, each one of them has its own column. But a lot of use cases don't care about the specific words. They care about the whole sentence. And if we are in a use case that cares about a sentence, like we'll, we'll go into an example now, we tend to look at just the first column. I'll give you an example for how to use that in search and how maybe you can build your own sort of semantic search engine. But before that, to establish some visual language, I'm not going to copy over this table every time around. I just love to use a shape like this, where the columns are these columns. And the rows, instead of the 768 rows that uh, Bert uses to represent each word and the sentence at the beginning, I'm just going to show these symbolic three rows. But in your head, you, you will know that each one of these columns uh, represents a, a word and it's of this length. Since we'll focus on search, we really don't care about these other words. We just care about this first column because this can be understood as a sentence embedding. It's a representation of the entire sentence, of all the words. And so if we want to use BERT right off the bat, this is the column that we can use right away. All right, let's build a search engine in two slides. To build a search engine, you have to have a bunch of web pages. So you have a crawler. Let's say we have these three web pages to begin with. We'll do a minimum viable product search engine. So Hyperion, Dune, the Matrix. We pass the text in them through BERT, and we get the, the that column, that CLS token representation that represents the entire document. And so each one of these documents would have its own vector. And then after we've 
searched, you know, we've, we've gathered or we crawled a number of pages, encoded them via BERT, we would have this archive. Before we receive any queries to our search engine, we just built an index here. And then when somebody goes to your uh, knockoff search engine, they search for, let's say, Neo, the one. We pass that sentence through BERT. We get that CLS, let's say, column uh, token, that vector of numbers representing this query. We just compare that. It's a, it's a simple multiplication and addition process that we compare this to each one of these three. And that comparison yields a similarity score. And just we show the most similar. So if it's 90%, like the, this would be the order of the results in the search results page. It would be the matrix first and then the other non-relevant, let's say, or less relevant uh, documents. So this is the end of this example of how to build a, a semantic search engine. Enjoy counting your billions. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this very quick, brief intro to BERT. If you want to learn more, I have a lot more details in my blog. It's uh, linked down the, uh, in the comments below. Uh, thank you, and uh, see you in the next video.